this place it wasn't the it wasn't just any record store don't don't look at me funny like that okay it wasn't just any record store you understand it was a it was a record paradise What's the best thing about working at a record store? Uh, discovering new music every single day. Do you feel like there's too much music in your head at any time, or...? Yeah, yeah, that's it, um, that's it. Too much? Uh, it can be overwhelming just because there's so much of it and you don't really know where to start. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if I would say too much. Is there a genre that you've been exposed to that you were like, I, I have no idea I'd be into this? Country Not, music. Country. I always like rockabilly, so that was kind of like a step in that direction. But um, I had a couple people turn me on to some really, really great stuff. I found a record by this Japanese guy whose name is Shoji Tabuchi. He started off as a um, classical violinist in Japan in the orchestra, and then he listened to bluegrass fiddle, and it totally blew his mind. He'd never heard it before. Changed his life. He moved to the United States, set up a whole new life in the United States. Okay became like a famous bluegrass fiddler, married an American woman, had a When family. was this? I want to say it was like in the early 70s. I had, it's like, I had the information on the blurb on the back of the LP, but this was back when I was still doing understock and I just found it and I was like, this is kind of interesting. I'll just play it and see what it sounds like. And it was really good. I mean, there's some fiddlers that'll just like shred as well as any metal guitar player. It's just mm. crazy how well they do it. Same thing with banjo players. I never expected that I would like any of that stuff, but I do, I do. I like Hank Williams as far as country goes. I like Ernie Ford, um, Wanda Jackson, although she's still more in the rockabilly kind of vein, but it surprised me how much of it I thought I would like. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, just working under stock here, you find records, like random stuff. You'll find it, you'll want to hear it, you'll play it, and wow, I never what in a million years thought I would have liked this. What originally made you want to try and listen to that uh, music from that the Japanese guy. I just found it. I mean, I was, was it the album cover? Or did it yeah, look it was the album cover. It was just like this happy looking guy holding a fiddle, and it had his name, and it said "Country Music My Way." And I flipped it, and I looked at the back, and it had that whole description, that story that I told you about, like how he started in one thing and moved to another. And I found it really intriguing, so I just um, I just played it, and I liked it, and it made me want to find more. I found like some French bluegrass band sound as good as any Americans. It's, it's really cool how it just kind of transcends regions, I guess, and how people can just pick up on it and excel at it. It's really cool. How long have you been working here? Uh, about four years now. Cool. So I'm working here this summer after I graduated high school. Do you enjoy it? Yeah, of course. I mean, this is my first real job. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's probably the best job I could have had coming out of high school. I learned a lot about music working here just from the first day. Just, you know, just by working under stock, talking to customers, finding anything that interests you just by cover art. Hmm. And what is under stock? All this stuff right here. Just piles and piles of music in which we have already, you know, one copy or two copies of top. Yeah. And so, you know, just, like the first menial task that you're given when you start working here is they basically put you in, say, like the rock section over here, and they're just like, okay, go through and pull up everything that isn't already up top. Right. So as you're doing that, you're just like, you have to finger through every album and discover new artists. Cool, cool. Figure out what goes where. But also, you know, like, sometimes you get caught up in curiosity will maybe compel you to pick up something you've never even heard of and just yeah. pull it out and play. So what's your favorite movie soundtrack then? Oh man. I'm gonna have to think on that. 
one of let's say one of the ten, one of the top ten, just randomly. So not ranking them, but recently John Carpenter put out this uh, album of Lost Themes. Really? He on with his son, and um, I mean that's just like cool stuff that basically he was just like pulling out from old computer files that he was messing with when he was doing soundtracks to like you know various various movies he was directing, and uh, he tweaked them with his son, which I, I think is just like a very cool project. Mm. You know, they were just like you know working on that. He put it out through this label, Sacred Bones. Who composed uh, them? It was it was him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he composed I think pretty much all of his soundtracks. For the thing? Yeah. What? I have no clue to this day. I had no clue. Wow, yeah, like, that's for, awesome. You know, for Halloween, for the thing, for Big Trouble in Little China. Wow. He's also one of my favorite film directors. He's so good. I would say, like, really I always good. I always like listening to the stuff that he's made. Yeah. It's like a very I mean it honestly reminds me sort of what's playing right now. This very sort of like heavy driven electronic I don't know, vibe to, to you know, all the stuff that he was making in the eighties. Right, right. Uh, He's good. I mean, I, I had no idea he had that that uh, music component as well. But that's yeah, awesome, man. Yeah. So this place, this record paradise, that's where I got this vinyl from. Right here. This thing's been passed down, okay? And I'm giving it to you in case something happens to me, alright?